as we come into Demopolis here, guys, I think we're going to hang out here for a couple of days, and as long as it the weather doesn't get too nasty, raining, or too cold or something, I'm going to launch the scooter, and we're going to go explore Demopolis. Um, the fellow that we met yesterday, Daniel, on the boat, he said that they have a nice little downtown that's worth seeing, so I think when we came through here five years ago, we didn't really spend any time. We just went and got gas and then took off again, so... Why don't we hang out here for a couple of days and check it out? Do something different. Stay tuned. All right, guys. So, I got a nice little park here, and I found Main Street pretty quick. That usually goes right into downtown, so we're going to follow it. Let's go see what we find. Demopolis, Alabama. Erected by the Maring Maringo Rifles Chapter, United Daughters of the Confederacy, 1910. Look at this, guys. There we got koi fish. Or goldfish. I am so glad we're taking the time today to look around Demopolis. It's what a neat old city. And I had no idea. You know, we came through here five years ago. We mostly just stayed kind of on the outskirts of it. But as I'm showing you here, it's, just, it's got a beautiful downtown square. Let me turn the phone around. When I ask if we're living in a museum, towns like Demopolis what come to mind for me. It's like walking through a museum. One thing I'm being reminded of is that adage about real estate that it's all about location, location, location. And these places that we go on this trip sometimes, it's like you if you would put some of these buildings in a more desirable real estate market, <coughs> they would be priceless. <laughs> Million dollars, millions of dollars. But when they're in these little economically depressed lost towns, you know, sometimes it can't even be given away. You know, it's location, location, location. Demopolis, the people's city. Demopolis was destined for commercial success and a diverse population due to its prime location in the fork of the Black Warrior and the Tom Bigby Rivers. River transportation and the railroad positively inf influenced the town's growth. French colonists founded Demopolis in 1817. They created a spirited town that welcomed European merchants, including Germans and of Jewish faith and American planters from states on the country's eastern coast. The hard labor of African Americans enabled local cotton businesses to prosper and to construct prominent warehouses on riverbanks where they attach busy river boat traffic. The artistry and craftsmanship of enslaved workers are still evident in the city's vintage buildings, homes, and churches. Different nationalities, different religions, and different races have contributed to Demopolis 
first envisioned by its French settlers as an American utopia and as a place they called the People's City. Bluff Hall, situated on historic White Bluff overlooking the Tom Bigby River. Bluff Hall was built in 1832 by slaves of Alan Glover for his daughter Sarah Serena and her husband Francis Struther Lyon. Lawyer and planter F.S. Lyon served in both the Confederate and the United States Congresses. Frequent wartime visitors in this house were General Leonidas Polk and General Zachary Diaz. Bluff Hall is now owned by the Mar Marengo County Historical Society. Okay, guys and gals, we are leaving Demopolis been here for a couple days and uh, that's Dennis with his two sailboats I didn't see him this morning I think he's either sleeping in or out walking his dog I don't know but maybe we'll see him down the river stay tuned I'm gonna try to explain this to you why it's going on so see this barge right there it's just coming out of way to get back in here get back in here that barge is just coming out of the and Dam headed north in Demopolis here, and uh, they were watering the same channel that 14 that the lock does. And he he communicated with me. He said, "Pleasure craft uh, passed me on two, which means my starboard to his starboard." So, uh, so yeah, that was nice of him. I am tied up whenever you're ready, sir. Roger, roger. They finally found us, guys. Here they come. Guess the trip's over. They found us. side of the dam in uh, Demopolis here. Or the spillway. Is it, maybe they're calling it the spillway more than the dam. For those who might be interested, I'm just showing you what we're doing here. So, we're getting on the inside of the, the red can, which means the shallow side. We're in about seven feet of water. And you stay, Wavy, you stay. And the reason why is because we're coming around a corner. And we got a nice big toe coming up, and we want to stay out of his way. We'll just let him use the channel. Go past us, and we'll just jump back on the channel. Piece of cake. Trouble ahead, trouble behind. Okay, I'm gonna try to explain something to you guys here if I can. So you can see we're on a very curvy part of the river. That's us, that little right there. And what I'm finding is 
<laughs> you can cut corners. <laughs> when they talk about mile markers on the river, they're talking about, you know, doing the full sweeps around the corners and such, which is understandable. But uh, you start to learn that you can kind of cut the corners a little bit. And there's, you know, I can cut inside the cans. I can straighten the curves and flatten the hills like the Dukes of Hazard did. And shave off some miles going down the river which really starts to add up on these long days where you're doing five or six miles an hour i'm trying to get to mile marker 173 which i think is the spot that has that abandoned plant of some sort with with good catfishing at least it was five years ago it's just kind of something to aim for because this part of the river just goes on and on until we finally get to mobile so it's kind of a, a destination to keep us looking ahead so Let's see what happens. It's going on three o'clock. We've got about maybe two hours left of sunlight, maybe two and a half if we really push it. And I think we're just barely gonna make it. Stay tuned to find out. Okay, beautiful end of the day. We are coming up on the spot that I think we're going to stay tonight if we can get in there. And it's still there and I remember correctly where it was. Kind of right, right about there. <laughs> okay guys, well, there's no, the water level's too low now. It was, you could barely get in there five years ago. Let me show you this guy. I just came into this little inlet that like, I bet you there was a foot on either side. Oh. <laughs> and it came down to about two and a half feet, but I got in here and it's it's kind of hard on this part of the tin tom to find protected places because it's, it's in, in the ditch, you know, ditch mode. Um, but yeah, looks like this is going to work tonight. I think I even see some fish jumping out there. We'll see how this goes. I, think, I don't know what this used to be. Some kind of some kind of barge dock at one time. I think that was the entrance right there because I can see, you know, that was it. Right there. And the entrance was right back there. But I guess we're going to have to seize this last little bit of daylight here and find a, a place to get off the river. It's about 5 o'clock in the evening. We've got maybe 20 minutes left. So we're making another run for it, guys. Got the last 10 minutes of sunlight. <laughs> and I'm really hoping this launch ramp down here has a dock or some place to tie up. There's also a creek. Beaver Creek. We'll see if it's got enough depth to pull in. We'll figure it out. Even if we have to go after dark. We've done it before. Okay guys, I will show you this better in the morning, in the light, but I'll give you an idea of what we did. One line there, one line there, we are off the channel, we're in about two feet of water, right out there is the channel. We're at mile marker 170 or so on the Tom Bigby, and there's another little cropping right there so <laughs> I think we're pretty safe <laughs> from the barges I was anchored in about six feet of water and I just kept thinking you know those anchors could fail so I went through the trouble find a little spot here in the dark but like I said I'll show it to you in better detail in the morning okay guys so we have a, a barge coming south and they're gonna pass us here in a little bit and I talked to a barge captain today on the phone. Hello, if you're watching. Uh, and I asked him a bunch of questions. I got a bunch more questions for him. Maybe we'll get to interview him someday, but like in person. But I guess they're, they manually run those spotlights. Like they can shine. They're, I mean, they must be massively powerful. <clears throat> and I am really glad that we got up in the trees here. I'll have to show you in the morning better where we're at, but... 
they're not coming in here. Good morning, guys and gals. Backwaters Brenton here. I'm going to turn the phone around and show you guys where we ended up last night. Pretty convenient. Just put the beagle out. Though she's looking at me like, what? This, this is a pretty sorry excuse for a walk. Well, too bad. We'll get one later. So, we are roughly at mile marker 170 on the Tom Bigby here. And might have already explained this so I won't go into too much detail but we had to find a place after dark and this is what we found kind of in between two interesting root systems in this little enclave here isn't that kind of neat let me see if I can zoom in on it <laughs> got a new phone here and it's not quite as good as the last one drop the old one while I was going through a lock and dam. But yeah, we're in about two feet of water here, as you can probably see. It's like perfect, actually. And it kind of slowly tapers out so I could just kick up the motor and come in here. And we watched a couple of barges go by last night. And this kept us nice and safe. So let's get back on the river. You want me to just leave you here? You want to stay here or you want to keep going? is I know I say this a lot but it looks abandoned check this out guys there is a spring someone did tell me about this and to look for it some kind of spring around the side of the river here I'm tempted to go fill up my water jug. <laughs> I'm getting pretty low. <laughs> We're checking out a spot called Witch Creek. Ooh, did you hear that thunder? Witch Creek and thunder. <laughs> Not a good omen. Good morning guys and gals so i need to shave obviously <laughs> i get lazy out here i don't see anybody so what's the point you know and i don't think i've jumped in the river for a couple days either so a little self-conscious of turning the phone around and look like a scumbag but who cares we are in witch creek which is mile marker 135 on the tom bigby i think i will i'll put it in here oh i've been eating too I promised someone that I would not eat on camera, but I can eat before and after, so. Uh, and this was a good spot. It stormed like crazy last night. It was thunder and lightning, just, you know, the type right over the top of you would just light up everything like daytime just for a second and go back down. And the wind was coming in from the riverside. The current was increasing on the, the creek side, so the boat was just, wah, wah, but we didn't get a drop of water in here. It was warm and cozy and... I just felt so, it's oh, having a good shanty boat. It's like having a cabin on the water. It's just amazing. It's absolutely amazing. I will have a shanty boat till the day I die. If not this one, 
an even better one. So yeah, guys, we are, I'm slowly kind of coming to life here reading. I don't have any phone signal and I find myself always going to my phone. Like I'm going to check something. I'm going to do something. I'm going to look up something. I'm going to email somebody or text somebody. And since it's not there, I just pick up a book. I'm reading River Man still. And it's really nice to take a break from electronic devices sometimes. And if it takes getting into a rare part of the country where they don't work, then so be it. I say treat yourself to it. I'm sitting here making breakfast and I see this coming down the river. <laughs> and hoping it slips behind the boat. And not get caught up on the outboard. You just gonna go around me? Oh hi, my name is Wavy Gravy, star of the channel. Since Brenton can't figure out how to make any money, I guess it's up to me. So some really nice folks have sent us some really nice stuff. And all they're asking us to do is just mention it to you guys because you'd probably like it too. So we got a really nice ice cold cooler. We got a really nice mini wood stove. And we got a nice drone too, which you're going to see in the future. Just Brenton's kind of afraid to crash it. But but he'll figure, he'll figure it out eventually. Okay, thanks. Uh, links below. Bye. Most of it went past. Tragedy averted. I see a beaver out the window, guys. Let's see if I can catch him. There he is. <laughs> Just in time. Oh, he comes back up. Am I in your space, little beaver? The beaver is... Shit, wavy, stop. The beaver is driving Wavy crazy. <laughs> shush, 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 shush. Oh, and he just splashed his tail. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. The water came up so much last night that the boat moved forward from the tree it was tied on. And luckily, it didn't hit the cabin. I didn't hurt anything. Okay, I went to the muddy shore, and it is muddy. And I pushed off. We're slowly drifting out. As soon as I get the right angle, I'm going to throw it in reverse, and we're going to get out of here. Witch Creek, mile marker 135, on the Tom <laughs> We're doing some more coastal hugging here to stay out of the wind that's coming right at us in the chop. It helps a lot. We're in like 35 feet of water, but you can see we're just kind of hugging the shoreline here. And there is trees down and debris and stuff like that, but if I'm just finding out that, you know, you just stay off of it for 30 feet or more, 30, 40 feet, and you're fine. Because the, as long as the depth is there, there could be trees down there. You're going to go right over the top of them, more than likely. We haven't hit anything yet, so. Okay, Coffeeville Lock and Dam. Let's see how this goes. I'll tell you guys more about this when we're done. Untie it up when you're ready, sir. This is the craziest lock and dam I've ever been through. Zero communication. <laughs> Zero communication on any channels. Won't pick up the phone. I had to call three other lock and dams and they finally called him, I guess on his private number. <laughs> man, oh man. Who hired that guy? A 
I say this to myself more than you guys. Don't let stuff ruin your day. I mean, this is one of a hundred. There's 99 beautiful, flawless things going on, and then this one, you know, and it can ruin your day if you let it. Trust me, I'm a, I'm a pro at that, but I'm not gonna let it. I'm gonna keep going down the river. Okay, guys and gals, it's the end of the day. <laughs> Basically getting dark, maybe another 20 minutes of daylight, and we're making a run for, let me show you, the old lock number one. There's, there's good anchorage right there. We're about less than four miles away. I've turned up the RPMs. We're doing almost eight miles an hour. there about one more mile well good morning guys and gals we came in here after dark last night they call this old lock and dam one which is about a mile marker i want to say 100 on the tom bigby here and it was it was pretty scary on the way out here this morning. I'm going to show you why. <laughs> but I was looking around here, and in the daylight in the morning here, and I'm like, "Hey, what's that?" And let me turn the phone around. I'll show you. As usual, Wavy's staring at the staring at the shore. When do I get to go to shore? Soon. So, look at that. That must be a part of the old dock and dam. We're going to bring the workhorse to life and motor over there and try to go to shore. Stay tuned. Coming into the old lock number one on the Tom Bigby here. Let's take a few minutes and look around this old original dock. I was just reading the sign up there. I'll take you up there in a second. It was an old one. Like, uh, I think it was closed down in 1960 or something. Let me read this to you guys. Clark County, 1812. Old Lock 1. Continued from other side. Okay, let's, let's start on the right side here. Old Lock 1. Lock 1 is one of the older federal navigation projects in the United States. Congress authorized improvements to the Black Warrior Tom Bigby River system and 17 locks were constructed, each numbered consecutively from south to north. Work began on Lock 1 in 1893, wow, and ended in 1909. Lock masters and their families lived on site, but in 1953 tornado, but a 1953 tornado claimed several of the original buildings, which led to the demolition of the remaining buildings. Continue on the other side. <clears throat> Lock 1 was in operation from September 6, 1908 until November 1960, when a new channel bypassed it, cutting off four miles of river traffic. A new lock and dam upriver near Coffeyville replaced the lock. Major improvements at the old lock site from 1999 to 2004 include a picnic pavilion, restrooms, renovated boat ramp, paved roads, parking lots, and a park host campsite. Improvements were made possible by a partnership between the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the Clark County Commission, and the state of Alabama. Of the 17 original locks, only the chambers of Lock 1 and Lock 17 are still visible above the waterline. All right, guys, I just talked to one of the local good old boys, and... I was kind of hoping he would offer to, we could throw our cans in the back of his truck, he'd take us, but he didn't offer and I wasn't going to ask. So we're going to get back on the river. We still have plenty of gas, but we don't have enough to get to Mobile. So we'll just stop in Jackson or something and we'll figure it out. Stay tuned and we'll find out together.